Hi, I recently released a track called Six Sided Sentinel, and in the making of it, I used a bunch of really cool sounders and techniques I'd love to show you today. In this video, I deconstruct the entire track so you can see exactly how I made it. If you haven't heard Six Sided Sentinel before, it's right here on YouTube, Bandcamp and Spotify. I recommend listening to it before watching this breakdown video. I'm, I'm really proud of it. <laughs> I was inspired to make this track when one day, while I was scrolling a little through Twitter, someone retweeted this music production contest announcement onto my timeline. It was hosted by Native Instruments to celebrate their 25 year anniversary. I like Native Instruments, I've been using this stuff for many years now and I haven't joined a contest like this in quite a while. Last time I participated in a music contest on Metapop, I remixed Andrew Huang's song Yours and actually won a nice little MIDI controller that I've been using ever since. So, in the hopes of making some really cool music and maybe even winning some music production goodies, I made this lovely track. And here's how I did it. At the very start, I just added a simple piano to my project. I'm calling it simple, but this instrument is actually super complex and detailed with its gorillions of sample variations, velocity layers and all kinds of other cool things to make a virtual piano sound just like a real one. But that would soon change. Before I even had any idea what kind of track to make for this competition, I thought of a neat little way to make a piano sound super choppy and cool. Basically, I dug into the very guts of this contact instrument and removed all the release samples. This is a little extra layer that plays when you let go of a note. And then I looked for the ADSR or Attack Decay Sustained Release Curve of all the regular samples and shortened that to just a couple of milliseconds. You see, when you usually stop holding down a note, ignoring sustain pedals and all that jazz, the main sample will keep going for a little while and fade out only rather slowly. This makes sure that no notes in this lusciously realistic sounding instrument sound choppy or digital, but that's exactly what I wanted for this project, so I just ripped it all out. If I show you a little before and after comparison, you'll hear what I mean. Hmm, lovely. Next up, I just played around with my newly messed up piano, creating a bunch of playful melodies until I stumbled upon this little doodle of notes. Together with some kicks and a couple of cymbals, it immediately sounds much more snappy and nice. I've also got these little snippets of percussion loops and playing briefly at the start of every section. I chopped these up and rearranged them to my liking, which also makes them vary a little bit every time they appear on the track. Oh, and here's something really cool I did to create fake cymbals, hi-hats and risers. I took this recording of hot sizzling water in a pan and processed it a little bit with some EQ and stereo widening. After that, I just let it play throughout almost the entire song while using volume automation to shape it into various little sounds. In the intro, it resembles little cymbals and slow, noisy risers, but right after that, the automation clips are much shorter and sharper, turning the noise into what sounds like a bunch of hi-hats. And then the noise becomes gated and choppy, only slowly rising in volume over the course of 8 bars. I really love shaping noise into sounds like these, and you can pretty much do this with whatever you can find. As long as your sample is long, sustained and non-melodic, just slap it under stuff and see what happens. Go ham, become evil, commit sound design arson! Most of the time it'll sound nice.
I used a bunch of various orchestral instruments to create these big chord stabs. They're made up of bassoons, cellos, piccolos, and tenor trombones. And once again, all of these instruments combined sound like this. And of course, you can't have a silly wangle and feature bass track without swoopsy sounding lead synths. And this little melody over here is just a little plug I made massive and then massively processed with vocodex and a heavy dose of OTT. I use vocodex to process synths all the time. I really like to do something called self-vocoding, which means that the carry and modulator signal of the vocoder are exactly the same. It's the same input. Here's what different settings sound like on my voice. Bad music. Bad music. Bad music. Or on a little synth bass. Or on this horse. <laughs> <laughs> As you can see, this technique is super versatile and incredibly fun to play around with. For those of you who don't use FL Studio, you can also get Vocodex separately for like 90 euros. This little plucky lead isn't the only synth doodling its little melodies here. When I composed this track, I thought it would be really cool to switch between different instruments all the time. It makes it sound more complex and chaotic, so it's exactly what I did here. There's this little blipsy lead playing sounds that remind me of sparkles and stars and stuff. Later in the intro, there's also the sustained self-vocoded lead that's otherwise pretty similar in design to that other vocoder instrument I talked about just now. Over here we've got yet another little swoopser. And since entering this music competition required me to use Native Instruments 25 synth, I used a bunch of that all over the track. My favorite preset is called Crescent and sounds like this. In between all these big melodies, I've got all kinds of wacky samples. I just love making a big mess with random samples, so here's a couple of them. There's a beer can, some nail gun recordings, a cat, some bottle rockets, a typewriter, loads of glitchy chaos, a bunch of super cool designed snares and little impacts, A rubber duck, some creature sounds I designed for a video game, and all other kinds of boobs and bleeps. Boob? Oh, I said boobs, oh no. I just added whatever cool sounds I could come up with or get my hands on. In the second half of the intro, everything gets slowly cranked to 11. The drums are much more dense now, and I added this nice and plucky super sour chord synth flooper, which plays together with a thick bass. Both of these synths slowly get more and more intense as I open filters, increase the K times and so on. It's just basic techniques to build tension and energy in electronic music. On top of all this, I chopped up that little soft cymbal from earlier, making it sound sharp and clicky. Right next to that we've got some more hi-hat and percussion loops and a couple of different risers. I also introduced a new little melodic synth in this section, which is just me saying ah with a short decay and relatively mild processing. Uh, 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 uh. 
Here's what this intersection sounds like in its entirety. And just like that, in the blink of an eye, it all goes nice and quiet. I rented out a couple of extra reverb layers, of which I slowed down one by an octave. On top of all that, just to sprinkle a little more detail onto this sudden impact, I added a recording of a very distant gunshot. Even if you listen to this recording on its own, it doesn't sound like a gun at all, just some loud distant noise. Soon after the reverb fades into the background, the sound of a distant harp reveals itself, and the tempo of the track drops from 185 to a mere 158 BPM. While this happens, the harp's notes jump up in intensity, a glockenspiel starts to play, and I slowly but surely introduce more and more orchestral instruments. A clicky, ticking clock grows louder, rhythmic, steampunky, mechanical noises join the fray, and it all builds up to... something. At this point in the making of this track, I kind of just duplicated the intro and moved it over here, just to see what it would sound like at this much slower tempo. Turns out this was a great idea, and I mostly just removed a couple of instruments to make it a little less messy and intense. I also rearranged and cut up a lot of the little in-between samples, just to differentiate the section a bit more from the intro. Oh, and these hi-hats form a little polyrhythm with the rest of the instruments. Initially, this emerged from the tempo change early in the track. Audio files stretch or shift, depending on a little per sample setting in FL Studio. But I decided to keep it like this, because I ended up really liking the sound of it. As we get ever closer to the final chorus of the track, a bunch of new instruments and sounds get introduced once again. I enjoy layering lots of different rises on top of each other, so I did that here as well. There's also a bunch of various percussion loops. I swear to god, I can't stop putting almond breaks into all of my music. Please help me, I have no idea how to stop doing that. On top of that, I've got another instance of Native Instruments 25 synth, using the Nervous Energy preset, which sounds like a nice and spacey pad. Ooh, fucking ghost! And to make it extra epic, the instruments Heroic Horns and Pandora Burst by Project Sam just blast away in the midst of all this. Other than that, there isn't that much new going on. Most of what's happening in the section is something you've already heard, but louder with more layers and more instruments at the same time and so on. Right before the final drop, we get one last moment of gentle clock ticking, before thunder of music comes crashing down. There's this mountainous chord stack of super saws, supported by a heavy bass, and the piano also does something new and cool. This arpeggiated melody is repeated by many other instruments, like this plucky synth from earlier, this bleepy bloopy synth, a glockenspiel, and many more. Oh, and I've recently started to use tubular, tubular metal bells. Tubular metal bells in a lot of my music. I love how they sound and they can make a powerful chorus just that tiny bit more grand and epic. 
in the 25 novels Energy and Crescent presets also make one more appearance, adding juice and swoopiness to the big finale. I kind of wish I had used even more presets from the 25 synth, since that's the main focus of this entire music production competition. That being said, I genuinely think it's a nice little synth to occasionally add to your music. I was worried I might just be adding the synth to my product for the sake of having it in there, you know, because the competition requires it, but no, I really enjoyed working with it and I'm definitely gonna keep it in my tool belt of instruments. At this point, you might be curious about the result of this competition. Did I, did I make it? Did I win? Nah, didn't even make the top 25 list. <laughs>